Hello, Rebel Stream and other friends. This is the Rail 6 and 7 Div Preview Week 13, so the penultimate edition. Um, and as you can probably tell, it's just me. I didn't know it was going to be just me until about five minutes ago. Otherwise, I probably would have put like a stupid ogre face over on the other side or something. But uh, Shadora is currently sick, so it is going to be just me doing this week. Uh, I've told him to give me his predictions independently without watching the stream that I record here. Um, so that ideally we can keep this sort of prediction competition going. But this is the last week for it, so worst case, it's not the end of the world. Uh, so we are going to be doing just team team looking at this week, and it's just going to be me. So there's going to be a lot of talking for me. So I hope uh, people are all right with that. Uh, it's just going to be my opinions. Shadora's opinion. <laughs> just fill in what you think Shadora's opinions are. Shall we get this going, I guess? This is going to be um, just team team looking at, as I said before, not uh, game reviews. And there will be one next week as well, uh, because we'll have the predictions to check, but we won't have predictions, so it'll probably be a short one, because we won't have new predictions to do. And, but we can take a look at the teams uh, after they've finished a season. Um, and if there are games that uh, are going to be playoff crucial, which I think is the case in most divs, um, we can take a look at those games, uh, one from each division, um, of course, uh, next week. But only if they're like playoff uh, crucial ones, which I think there should be in most cases. Um, you'll also have to forgive me when we're doing predictions and stuff, because I'll need to like, normally Justin or Shadora write stuff down while I talk, uh, and I'm going to have to write stuff down so I can put it in the YouTube description and all that good stuff. So you're going to have to bear with me a little bit when we're doing those things. <clears throat> um, so, here we go. In-game. Oh, I'm gonna need to use a different screen. There we go. Let's use that one. Different transition. Shadora isn't here. Um, this is Rail 6. Um, some games haven't been played yet, so can't talk about those ones, but by week. So, you know, by week. Um, Average Race Joe's in the Economy of Scale hasn't actually been played yet. Um, for what it's worth, we predicted Rice. I don't know if that's because we are uh, doing this a day early and it's just scheduled to happen tonight um, or or what, but that hasn't been played yet. Um, we have Foul Targets versus the Great Cold Ones, which is now also a bye week. And we have this nonsense. What is this? I watched this. I watched the second half of this game live. This is a 6-0 win for my stays, which is um, a little silly, certainly. Titanium, the Wardance, are picking up a level, which he certainly needed. Um, but this is kind of exactly what you expect a 6-0 to be on the half of the Wood Elves. You know, 138 yards running, um, three passes. We'll do that. Um, this was just, you know, Wood Elves kick, run forward, get ball, score. Wood Elves kick. Or like, with lizards fail to pick up ball, wood elves run, get ball, score, like repeatedly. It was 6-0. Um, it was pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah, like this was a nonsensical game. I watched the second half of it, and like I remember I was hanging out on Metal Stream, uh, I believe, and he was like, well, what games? I was just casting some stuff with him. And he was like, well, what games do we want to look at? And I was like, well, the Elements of Style versus the Dead Wrestler Society is currently 3-0. And I'm like, I wonder what that game is look looks like. And then I joined the game, and it was like turn 9. And it was 3-0. And I was like, oh. <laughs> we watched the rest of that game. Uh, yeah. Cat, please, no. So that was a thing. Uh, it was quite a game. <laughs> A lot of SPP for my stays there, but it's it's exactly how you'd expect a Wood Elf team to go 6-0. Uh, but you might want to give that game a, a look if you'd like. Um, so let's see. Shadora and I um, both predicted the Wood Elves to win that. So I have to mark down a couple points for us there. Um, and we had the Respectable Gents and the Fogmire Fen Beasts, where we predicted the Lizards to win, and the Lizards did win 2-0. So let's do another 
A couple of points down there for the two of us. Uh, 2 0 for the Fugmire Fen Beasts. Um, yeah, there was a lot of skink um, passes, and there were. It's not in this game, in the Wood Elf game. There's a lot of skink passes, and there were like skink failed pickups and stuff, and the Wood Elves just were like, hey, look, ball on the floor. Mine now, score. And that was the game. Like, uh, but respectable gens versus the lizards. Uh, the Croxagor got the MVP, which leveled him, which is pretty cool. Um, Loner got MVP, so that's unfortunate for the respectable gents. Um, very seriously in control uh, for the lizards. They had the ball most of the time. Um, 66 to 49. Five injuries and three KOs inflicted to four KOs inflicted. Um, they did sustain a casualty despite that, but... Uh, you know, lizards out removing the chaos, and if the chaos go down players to lizards, they're just gonna lose. Lizards are a better pitch control team, and they can control the pitch very well when you don't have any players. Uh, so I feel like that is going to be pretty straightforwardly. Lizards there, pro not working very often. Uh, then we had the bad QB squad and Hufflepuff heroes, where we predicted the Camry would win this, and they tied. Which is interesting. Uh, so the Blitzer, the Agi Blitzer, got MVP and leveled, and the Skaven Blitzer got MVP and leveled, which is good because he really needed a new one. So we were like, "Yeah, can we have this?" Because the um, Underworld didn't even have their regular Killer Blitzer; he was MNG'd. So we were like, "Well, they're probably not going to win," uh, but it looks like they managed to tie tie it out. Um, one successful pass, one successful catch. Yeah, it looks like they played the speed game. You know. You, they're not going to be able to get many injuries without their killer, so they just went for uh, outranging the Kemri, I would imagine. And uh, looks like they did that for the most part. They did take a few blocks. Oh my god, how did they tie this? Ten sustained casualties? Oof, that's that's ridiculous. Oh, this team is probably hurting. Uh, Hufflepuff heroes brutalizing the um, the the underworld. The underworld managed to sneak in a touchdown somewhere. That's pretty cool. Um, and then we had Rouge's Gallery versus Bioware for Life. Um, this is the Murder Chorps versus the uh, the Vampires, and we predicted the Chorps would win this, and uh, they tied. Um, so there you go. I, if I recall correctly, in our point system, ties are worth zero. I don't actually remember. Um, I think that's how it goes. Shadora was the one who kept track of that. Uh, Thrall getting MVP, Bull Centaur getting MVP. Uh, let's see, another successful patch. Not very many KOs. This like the the vampires out punched the Chaos Dwarfs somehow, which is a little serious. They inflicted a lot of KOs on these Chorfs. Um, no injuries though. Oh right, because the vampires got like strength level ups and stuff. <laughs> That's really funny. I'm, I'm excited to go look at them. Um, yeah, the vampires running away from the chorfs for the most part. Like, not very many blocks on either side. Um, pretty even. Like, the vampires took more casualties, but, you know, that's to be expected with vampires biting stuff. Chorfs actually taking some damage from the lower... the from the blocks they sustained. Um, so that's interesting that this, uh, this worked out. Oh, he let you foul forever. Well, there you go. That would do it. Uh, killing the he killed the um, or injured the killer chorf on turn two, which made it uh, a lot easier for the vampires to take control of things, uh, which certainly makes sense to me. Um, Hypnogay is not doing a thing, unfortunately. Uh, Bloodlust a little less than average too. So well done on Dire Sick Fish for for tying that one. Um, so after uh, those results, there's only two things that we predicted here that went anywhere. Um, this is what the leaderboard looks like. So it's worth noting that um, there's one game that hasn't, a couple games that haven't been played here because of these buys. Um, so the Chaos Dwarfs are in first with 26 currently, and My Stays is in second with 24. So those are the two um, the two playoff spots right now. Um, although Rage Dwarf is going to win this week, which will put him at 25, which is one ahead of My Stays, uh, and then. The Great Cold Ones will win this, which will put them at 24, which is tied with My Stays, but My Stays has a better TD differential, so currently My Stays is third. And then, this is hard to look at when these games haven't been played yet. Maybe I should have put this off till Wednesday, considering Shadora wasn't going to be here anyway, and the reason why we can't do it on Wednesday is because of him. Anyway, 
Um, and the average race Joe's, if average race wins this, he also goes to 24. So this one is a, is a pretty important match to know the result of because we could have three teams tied at 24 um, and then the dwarfs at 25 and the chaos dwarfs at 26. So going into the last week and it's important. There's a lot of games that matter here. Uh, we've got, well, I'll get to those in a minute when we do predictions or when I do predictions. Um, but this is, there's a lot that could occur here, right? So if Average Race Joe's wins this, there are three teams at 24, one team at 25, and one team at 26 for the two top playoff spots. Um, and then there'll be, I think, another team at 21. Yeah. So they can make it to 24 if all those 24 teams lose, which I don't think is a possibility based on what the matchups are. Um, but yeah, so we've got Mr. J, My Stays, Unseen Walker, average, potentially average rice, we're not sure yet. Um, potentially economy of scale, because that they're also at 21, by the way. Um, and uh, Eisen Mike, all uh, within playoff range very easily. And uh, Fogmire Fen Beasts with an outside shot as well if they win their next one. So Division 6 is pretty tight currently. Hard to show with uh, all these bye weeks that are going on, but well, when people drop out, what can you do? Um, so let's take a look at some games, or some teams. Dead Wrestler Society, Draenor. Movement Busted Saurus, but I think that's not old. So that is old. Um, Nagled Road Warrior Hawk. Benning is also not old, or also old. Uh, Croxigar is getting close to level, which is nice. If you can pick that up before, uh, in your next game, that'd be amazing if you happen to end up going to playoffs. Uh, this player is good. Bl guard block everywhere, which is good. A uh, couple break tackle getting thrown in there. Uh, a stand firm might be nice somewhere as well, uh, but break tackle can do similar things. But these Saurus are getting pretty developed, and um, it's efficient for what it is. Like there's a lot of Saurus levels and like no skink levels, so you have 1610 TV and it's almost all in Sauruses, which is really nice. I like that a lot. This is a good Saurus too, Mighty Blow. You got at least two in there. Uh, to this is your sort of blitzing Saurus. Um, this guy could pick up guard and be super annoying. Uh, if you want to play the more pitch controly game, but he's also niggled, so guard means he's going to get hit, and therefore he's probably going to get hurt because of niggled. But armor nine, eh, he'll, I mean, utilize him, he'll die eventually. No, no skink levels to say anything about, really. Sorry, uh, Shador is my lizard expert, so it's hard for me to say a whole lot about it. Oh, right, the Agi 4 skink is gone. He was there before, wasn't he? Uh,. There was one of those. We recently lost the uh, Bloxagor, um, right? And we lost the Agi for Skink, uh, sadly. A lot of Skink deaths on this team, but most of them have been pretty irrelevant other than the uh, Agi 4 guy. Sad that he's gone. Because he was good. Agi 4, sidestep, um, sprint, sure feet. They, uh, that was a good skink who is no longer with us, unfortunately. We have the Fugmire Fen Beasts uh, by Rolling Red. Another lizard team. Dorito the Supreme. Totally new Saurus, I would imagine. Uh, I think we've lost. There was, I think we lost, so we must have lost a Saurus. Yeah, it looks like we lost a Block Mighty Blow Guard Saurus. Um, which is a little, a little sad. That's an important piece to lose. So having one uh, one skillless Saurus is a bit of a weak spot, considering all the other ones are as developed as they are. Guard Croxagora. We've got the ever-controversial Armor Saurus, but he's Blodge Guard. This is uh, Blodge Sidestep, which we've talked about before. The Sidestep is probably just better as Stand Firm. Um, but these, two Saur these three Saurus are really good. This guy is a little weird, too. He's Armor 8 and Piling On. So like he's gonna if if you pile on with him, a you're giving up some pitch presence and that's strength four, and b people are going to foul him because he's on the floor and c he's uh and also he's armor eight, so he's a little scary to keep around. He's probably gonna die. Um, 
But these two Saurus are really nice. Block Mighty Blow, Frenzy Tackle Guard. Block uh, Mighty Blow, Frenzy Tackle Pro. Both really good at surfing. And we can see how, if you look at the uh, the surf stats from this team, uh, there are a lot of them. Let's see. They have inflicted 17 surfs, I think, this season, which is uh, not insignificant. Um... I think I'd like a little more guard. There's only two. And this guy, like this guard, honestly, you'd consider it being stand firm because you're trying to surf people. And then if you get stuck on the sidelines, he's surfable back. It's less a problem with Saurus because they're strength four. So people are going to have to dedicate more to doing that. Uh, but stand firm would be nice there. But you can't because you only have three guard. Um, you'd, you'd, I'd like to see some more guard in this team somewhere. But we did lose a guard on the Saurus that was uh, recycled there. So that. Uh, doesn't contribute. You'd like to get another one somewhere, but other than that, looks pretty good. This is a good ball carrying skink with blodge step. Another annoying diving tackle skink, pretty good. So nice that he's gone. <laughs> oh, a second at AV bust. Yeah, no, you don't. You don't keep a scaly noblar. Um, and then we have the Hufflepuff heroes. Sorry, I can't. I only have two monitors, so I can't have like Twitch chat and. The stuff that I'm looking at it's it's harder when it's uh just me taking care of all these things I have Hufflepuff heroes coached by the Wu or Wu Gambino depending on how you know him uh and we still have this nonsense tomb guardian block dodge tackle guard mighty blow guard grab stand firm mighty blow guard uh this is a very common thing you see with Camry teams is there's always one developing Tomb Guardian and by the time he catches up these guys one of these guys are dead um they are I mean are, are AV9 and regen but Decay does bad things it kind of cancels it cancels out the regen don't quote me on saying that's how it actually works because it doesn't but um when you when they do fail regen they'll have two injuries generally so they kind of die pretty quickly compared to other players um even though they have regen, so you'll often have one rebuilding, unfortunately. But the mummies he does have are really good. These guys are super frustrating to deal with, especially if you can stick two strength five guard players next to each other. Uh, the Agi Blitzra that leveled from the last game has picked up piling on, so we have a more reliable uh, removals, which is certainly something he was missing. Right, He's got a couple mighty blow, but only actually three, and you'd kind of expect more to exist for Kemri. It looks like we lost a Blitzra as well. Um, I wonder if that is the case. Um, oh, that's the wrong team. Flip of heroes. Uh, yeah, we lost a uh, Tomb Guardian recently. Um, this is actually another new one. He had recently bought an. This is the second version of this guy, I think. Yeah, he's only played two matches because <laughs> there was another one before him. Uh, but I think we must have lost a Blitzra fairly recently. There's only one there. But the one he has is good. It's both capable of ball carrying in a pinch, but also uh, good at stomping on stuff. More reliable removals is always good. Got a good throw raw. I mean, he's got everything you really want. Block, um, dodge, because you got the doubles, and then, you know, leader. Because doubles again, more free rerolls. Or no, wait, no, they have passing access, don't they? They do, yeah. So that's not a double, but it's uh, another free reroll. Um, it's one of the few things you can take on Thoraz. Like once they get block, you hope for st stats or doubles. You got dodge. The other thing you could do here is kick off return or fend, maybe as it's similar to like Dwarf Runner style. Um, but he's got a lot of reliable pickups here, right? He's got the throw raw. He's got the edgy three blitz raw. He's got the edgy three skeleton with sure hands. Got a strength block skeleton and a guard block skeleton. I like how he separated his disposable skeletons from his non-disposable skeletons. Although one of these guys basically has to go on the line. Uh, probably the strength one. He's slightly annoying. And when if he dies, you save yourself a bunch of money. So that's not the worst thing in the world. Because these guys are too valuable to get rid of. And you need your kick guy not on the line if you want to actually use it. Um, we get some disposable and non-disposable skeletons there. Uh, and then I'm excited for this, Dire Sick Fish and Bioware for Life. Look at those levels, man. Boom. <laughs> we talked about this like two weeks ago, I think, but doubles plus strength vampires. Strength 5, edgy 4, armor 8, gross. Well, they're going into your last game of the season with a, an MNG vampire, which is a little unfortunate. Um, 
because you know you're vampires you kind of rely on vamps but so going down one is pretty rough uh at least you're, you're more likely to have a bench because you have less bloodlusts and less bites and stuff especially considering you have five rerolls so like probably really abuse your fouling here like you have a couple of dirty players like foul like every turn until you start running out of players um because you don't need as many thralls with that many rerolls and only three vamps Um, and yeah, and you're playing for next season anyway. That's true. I mean, just get some levels, or if you can. But you just recently leveled, like, these three guys, so they're all pretty far away from it currently. Yeah, I don't. I think you're out of the uh, playoff contention, so there's not really a whole lot you can do about that. Yeah, uh, 14 points. Yeah, you are out of playoff contention currently, so playing for next season. But if you really want to win, utilize that dirty player. But those vamps are getting really gross. Um, let's see, what else would I... You've got the reliability skills. Now you can start taking other things. You've got one tackle. Uh, maybe another mighty blow somewhere would be pretty nice. Um, hope for stats. You're at the point where you can probably start taking pro if you really want to. Um, another tackle would be nice because you do only have one currently. Um, so getting another one would be a good option, I think, somewhere. Uh, maybe on one of the strength guys. Um, that other strength guy should probably also get dodge at some point. Uh, then we have Rouge's Gallery and Mr. J. Um, guard, Stand Firm, Sidestep are also all good options. Um, I think I'd like to get another tackle somewhere first, because only having one can be annoying. Um, but following that, um, guard would be really nice, especially if you can get, if you can get doubles on a thrall on your guard, that'd be really good. Um, sidestep would be nice on the Vamps. Uh, and here is the, the Chaos Dwarf team. It still has four rerolls for no discernible reason. Get rid of that reroll. Ugh. Um, they've had a lot of buys recently. Unfortunately for them, it sucks when you're expecting to play a game and then you just don't get to play it. Um, but their team is no worse for wear, um, certainly. We've got the ad, the ball-carrying bull, who's amazing with Agi, block, break tackle. Break tackle's a little weird. Especially after you got Agi, but we've talked about that before. It's like, it's a plus one for 20k, which doesn't seem... I mean, I guess people use that, will pay 20k for plus one on dodges with like two heads. Maybe it's not that weird. Um, Guard and Shorehands. Short, guard before Shorehands is a little strange, but he's got it now, so he's much more reliable. And then we've got a Blitzing one with Block, Break Tackle, Strip Ball, and Mighty Blow. Um, so he is the uh, the the blitzer, the blitzer version, the strip ball version. Um, tackle is probably next. Um, is a good option there, or maybe even frenzy. Uh, we've got a bunch of chaos dwarfs with various things. This guy is super cool with the piling on horns, block, m mighty blow, claw nonsense. He's gonna get pro next probably. Fortunately for everybody else in the league, he's niggled. So if you can get this guy on the floor and step on his face, um, then you are in a good situation, which is, I imagine, what the vampires did to them. Um, then we've got three. Another two, another two Claw Mighty Blow, but at least they don't have Piling On. Uh, and then all of them have Guard, and all of them have Mighty Blow. So like any one of these guys are a double away from getting Claw Mighty Blow, and they all have Guard except for this guy. Like, this is a... Like, these... Blockers are really solid and really scary. Um, then there's a new one. Uh, he doesn't have anything yet, but there's enough guard on this team. His first level is going to be Mighty Blow. Um, unless he rolls doubles, then it's Claw. And you just sort of hope for doubles at some point. Then some Hobgoblins. A guard. Another guard is always nice, although you have a lot already. But this one is more mobile at movement 6. Dirty player, block. You might consider kick at some point just to kick short a lot of the times and get your chorfs uh, engaged really quickly. Um, but yeah, no, that's a scary chorf team. I wouldn't want to play it. And then we have the Underworld uh, Bad QB Squad by Buzzard. Um, this is the team that suffered 10 injuries last game. Uh, and we can tell it has occurred because they are down players. But the good thing is they have the important ones. Right, so they've got the Troll and he's got Block Claw Tentacles who I, and he's only 5 SPP away from leveling. Like, they took a lot of injuries, but it looks like they were all on goblins, which is fine. Goblins are expendable. Um, there's an MNG on a lineman, which is a little annoying. But we have both blitzers. This one is pending a level, so he's going to get Mighty Blow. Um, or if you get 
um, or, or guard, perhaps, or if you get Devil's Claw. And then uh, the other Blake Bortles is back. Um, he is MNG'd last game, but for his next game, the Terror rises again with uh, Piling on Jump Up, Claw Mighty Blow. We're going to be missing a Skaven Lineman but the one that for your next game, but the one we do have is Horns Wrestle, which is a nice uh, sacker. And the Sacker Goblin is still around with the Horns Wrestle. I love this Goblin. He's super cool. All the rest of the goblins that died were just like Linos anyway. There's, I don't think there's anybody particularly interesting that died there. So, um, despite all the casualties, he's, he seems to be fine. Um, two throwers. This one is kind of good. I like the uh, sure or the sure hands plus um, extra arms and ag three is like a rerollable two plus all the time. And two heads means he he can get out of there pretty easily. Basically, ag four. Uh, so that's nice. Very speedy. We have the respectable gents in Chaos Time, uh, who are, I think, a little trimmed from where they were. Um, oh, it's most of... Yep. Well, there were a lot of Chaos Warriors with levels. Um, now there's one. There was one that had <laughs> Strength 5 and Double Niggle, and he's gone. But we've got another Strength 5 now. He's at least got Block. But unfortunately, all these other ones are totally rookies. Like, this guy is close, but... They need some blocks somewhere. This Chaos team is uh, in rough shape. This is a good sacker. He's got Tackle and Dodge. You pick up uh, Wrestle next, and that's a really good piece. Um, this guy you probably make into your ball carrier, or you could, I mean, you could make him into a, use him as a ball carrier now too. Um, tackle doesn't help that much with that, but, uh, so you'd probably rather, but the Dodge is nice. Um, if you could get, I'd try to level this guy, and if you got doubles, he becomes your ball carrier. Because you can get uh, you can get dodge on him and that would be really nice. But even if you don't, you know, give him block carry with the movement guy. And then uh, we got one guard piece, which is good. It's at least it's something. And we got a, the startings of a killer with block and mighty blow. Uh, so he'll want to pick up claw, tackle, piling on, etc. But a lot of damage done to this team, sadly. We have the elements of style with my stays. We still have lithium, the most disgusting catcher in the universe. Still running styles on people with, uh, as we saw in that 6-0 victory that he recently took. Um, and we have the other two catchers who are less disgusting, but still good. Um, guard, blodge step, you know, less disgusting. He's still really, that, that's a really good piece. Um, not only is he annoying to knock over and push around with blodge step, but you can also use guard with him. And we have the annoying sort of defensive catcher, right? So we've got kick. Uh, and then we've got Diving Tackle, Sidestep, Block, Dodge. He's very annoying to remove from uh, people who he marks up. Treeman has got Guard and Grab. Very standard Treeman things. Thrower's picked up Shore Hands to be a little more reliable. He's also got um, Accurate for those tosses. And Chlorine has picked up uh, Dauntless, which is kind of cool. So we got tackle, dauntless, plus movement, leap. It's pretty silly, um, but we do have the big thing is we do have the makings of a new uh, cage diving strip ball word answer coming out with the level in the last game for titanium. We picked up strip ball, so we've got the uh, the blodge strip ball leaping word answer. Uh, basically, all you really need for them to be really gross. Tackle would be nice, certainly. That could be a potential next level. And then we've got another guard. So this is a Wood Elf team with three guard. And this is uh, on the fourth catcher. Why is he not up here with the other catchers? Reorder your players. Oh, well, actually, they're in a, they're in the correct order anyway. Because uh, periodic table, I guess. I don't know. I don't know which way I like better. Is it more important that the positionals are together? Or is it more important that they're actually in periodic table order? I can't decide which one I want. But anyway, there are three guard on this elf team, which is really good. Like one one guard on an elf team changes how you play drastically. Two guard on an elf team is really serious. Um, it's, uh, and three is even better. It's bad. Well, one of them is on a tree, which is kind of where you'd expect to get it. But two on other players is amazing. And then a couple sort of rookie linemen. Um, you could probably fire that guy if you really wanted to. He's zero SPP and movement six. Um, a loner might just be better. Somebody you can stick on the line and not care about. Less reliable if you really need to use him for something, but 
might consider that option. We've got Eisen Mike and the Great Cold Ones who haven't actually played their game this week um, yet, if I recall correctly. So we don't actually have much we can say here. Yeah, they have not. So there's not much we can say here because this could change pretty drastically because uh, this is no different than it was last week. Um, but we've got here are the linemen. Uh, there's one dirty player, there's one guard, and there's one fend. The fend is interesting. Um, it's basically just a um, lineman skill. It's so they can't follow up and get be more or better blocks uh, on the line. Right? It's it's your expendable sort of uh, three person on the LOS skill. And then these are the ones you want to keep away because you've got guard, which is useful, and dirty player to stomp on bad things. Is it a buy? I wasn't aware that it was a buy. Um, because on the schedule it just says average race. Uh, or no, this is a buy. Sorry, I was looking. I was thinking with the lizard ones. So this is a buy. Yeah, I was thinking with the lizard game. So this is a buy. He'll go up in points. And so all we're looking at is MVPs here. So where could the MVPs go that would be good? Well, it would level these two guys, but you don't really want that, in all honesty. They're good enough as they are. You want to keep them cheap. Um, either of these... This Berserker would level, which would be really nice, especially since he's got one pending. Um, this Berserker would be okay, but less good, because we only have... It wouldn't level him. And we've got two runners, both with plus movement. That uh, is really nice. That's a lot of speed adding to your team. One is guard and dodge, which is a mobile... Uh, a really mobile guard piece, which is very nice to have, uh, as any undead or um, necro team with guard ghouls will tell you. We've got a mighty blow runner who can do some blitzing nonsense. Then we've got two ulfs. Both have picked up block, both have picked up guard, and this guy's picked up stand firm. So uh, he's excellent for surfing um, because he's not really capable of being surfed back now. Partially because of strength four, and partially because of stand firm. Like these are both really good ulfs. They're not going to be doing much killing, uh, but they're going to be very good at controlling the pitch. Um, and you, you're going to rely more on your berserkers for killing. Um, and this guy is got mighty blow, probably unless he's picked up doubles. Um, so he can be the start of your killer. You're going to want tackle uh, or piling on on him, depending on if you level him up or not. Um, MVP on either of these doesn't level them. MVP and none, none of these level them either. But this is a really good Yeti as well. Block, Mighty Blow, Claw Guard. Um, that's a scary Yeti. You can both be a centerpiece with that guard, as well as murder some pieces with uh, Mighty Blow and Claw. Very effective. You've got the Average Race Joe. So this is a game that hasn't been played this week, and it's actually a real game, as far as I know. Um, so this could change a lot. Uh, movement Busted Crocs, I think, is relatively new. But guard Stand Firm, very typical Crocs levels. And then every week we say this, but these are the most standard lizards in the universe. Block, 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 guard, 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 mighty blow, mighty blow, done. Um, one of them is tackle, which is great. Now that we've finally picked up some tackle, tackle is pretty useful. Um, this is only one. Um, some break tackle. Uh, and I think another tackle, probably on this guy. Um, and then maybe some break tackle uh, sprinkled around between these sources, and they've got pretty much everything they want. Uh, and then we've got some annoying skinks. These guys are both super annoying defensively with sidestep and diving tackle. This one also has block. Um, then we have this one who's definitely ball carrying with agi and sprint. And then we, or isn't sure feet? I always mix those up. That is sure feet. I always mix up sprint and sure feet. And then two more annoying diving tackle, one with block. Um, these skinks are extra annoying. Um, they are a lot of TV. You know, skinks bloat really fast and that's a lot of skink levels. Like, this team is worth more um, than Draenor's team, like, significantly, like 160k more. And Draenor has... Oh, well, Draenor also has... Uh, oh, no, he doesn't. No, no, no loners here. Dr but Draenor has, like, a lot better Saurus levels, or a lot more Saurus levels, I should say. It shows you that it's a good example of what happens with uh, Skink Bloat. But they're good Skinks, right? This is the kind of example, Steve, right here, is... You know, you go sidestep, you go diving catch, or you go diving tackle. If they don't roll doubles, you fire them. And then start over. Right? So we've picked it. We've got three that are now worth keeping because they've got doubles. And these other two are just going to get cycled back and forth to keep your TV down until you get something good on them. Then we have Rage Dwarf and Unseen Walker, who's also looking to pick up a buy this week. So uh, we don't really know what's going to happen here. Furious Dwarf is one SPP away from leveling, which is super needed. Um, when you have a troll slayer like Mad Dwarf, uh, he's going to be doing a lot of your blitzing. 
given the opportunity to do so. Uh, meaning that casualties are going to be few and far between for Furious Dorf, which is going to be difficult to level him. So it's going to be difficult to level him. Once you pick up, pick up Mighty Blow, though, that changes a lot because you're more incentivized to blitz with him if you can. And it's another Mighty Blow hit, so more casualties, more levels, blah, 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 blah. But this is a great Troll Slayer. This is everything you want. If you could pick levels, this is what you would pick, you know? Mighty Blow piling on. It gets the jump up immediately after piling on. Then takes Tackle. Really nice stuff. Um... Yeah, like that's that's what happens uh with uh troll slayers. Or like when when you have another player, like this guy is gonna do a lot of blitzing. Um you've got like these other mighty blow players that can do blitzing. Um this guy will be blitzing on defense. You know, you've got you're missing a blitzer, aren't you? You are. Um this guy can do blitzing because movement five, um, and strength four. Right? So a lot of the times this guy just isn't gonna get blocked, so it's so hard for him to level. Um, but once he gets that one one more SPP for Mighty Blow, it'll make a really big difference, and he'll he'll he won't catch up because he's like fifty SPP behind. But uh, it'll accelerate his leveling a lot. We are missing a Blitzer here, um, which is relatively important because it's one of the only Agi threes, and you know more than movement four you have on the team. Uh, so that would be a nice pickup to get uh, when you can afford it. Um, after this week, presumably, because uh, this is a buy and you haven't played it yet and you're going to get a bunch of money. The other thing you could do is just pick one up and hope he gets MVP, but um, I don't even know if you want that. You might want MVP to try to go to one of the other players first. Like a 5 SPP Blitzer is no real different than a 0 SPP Blitzer. Yeah, like that annoys me too. Everyone else is block Thick Skull and the Blitzers start with Thick Skull block and I don't really understand why. This is the most typical Dwarf Runner I've ever seen. Um, block, kick off return, fend, uh, try to level other players because he doesn't need anything else. Like the only thing you'd hope for now are stats, right? If he could get Agi 4 or Movement 7 or Strength 4, those would all be really nice. Um, those are all the stats you care, like the skills you care about as a Dwarf Runner. None of the other general skills are really good. The passing skills aren't super useful. You could take Leader and drop a reroll if you really want to to save a little bit of TV, but. I don't think you care. Um, and that Blitzer is really good. Lodge Firm Guard Strength 4 is super annoying to deal with for the other team. You just stick him places and they can't get rid of him and he's going to apply a lot of assists. Rookie Longbeard, Rookie Longbeard. And then some um, pretty standard dwarf levels for the most part. At the start, we've got Guard, Guard, Mighty Blow, Mighty Blow, Guard. Kind of what you expect. A little mix of both. Once, Especially once you get a couple Guard, you can afford to pick up more Mighty Blow. Then we got Mighty Blow and Stand Firm. This guy getting plus strength being super nice. One of the biggest, uh, a big annoying thing for dwarves is just the lack of strength when you go up against like lizards or chaos or um, orcs or whatever, and they have those strength four pieces that can sort of bully you around one for one. And if they can isolate your guard with their strength four pieces, it's difficult for you to to keep your play team consolidated. Um, and two strength four uh, really alleviates that weakness. Um, and then. Lodge Dwarf. Um, we had a good discussion about this in our clan Discord the other day. Like Blodge is really nice because they're annoying to uh, they're annoying to deal with, but it's not. You sometimes you might we we're debating whether or not like dodge is good, or if you want um, jump up. They're so slow that jump up is really useful just to be able to reposition them. Um, dodge is almost just wasted TV against tackle heavy teams. So it depends on how many tackle heavy teams there are around. Um, but if it's not, if there aren't tackle heavy teams around, which I don't think there are really in this division, uh, the dodge makes them very annoying to knock over, but you're also not, that's all you're, you're not going to dodge very often with them. It's an interesting discussion. Certainly. I, I think, I, I think I like dodge because it makes it really annoying for your opponents. Uh, but there are some opinions out there that are different. Oh, this guy was supposed to be a blitzer, but you bought the wrong one. Ah, uh, oops. Well, you can fire him. Just fire him now. Don't don't tell anybody I'm telling you this, but you're getting a bye week this week, right? So just fire him now, and then don't buy anybody until after the bye week is processed so that the SPP is more likely to go to one of these guys, and then just buy a new blitzer afterwards. You just You really don't want this guy getting SPP if you don't plan on keeping him. And then a... Um, 
a defensive runner with strip ball and wrestle. Uh, tackle is a good option for him potentially, even though you have a ton, but he's going to be doing blitzing. Movement if you can get it. Good stuff. <clears throat> uh, economy of scale and furl. Uh, this is the one that hasn't played this week, so we don't really have much to talk about, but there's definitely not much to talk about. Poor furl. He's been like rebuilding all season. Um, Soros are starting to get there. We got three with block. This guy took break tackle first, which is interesting. Not something I would have predicted. Still two rookie ones that are about that. This one is very close to leveling, so another block would be super handy. This block mighty blow should accelerate his uh, blitzing a little bit, and you can pick up a tackle somewhere on the team. Croxagore can be very useful, just being a big strength five body, but he is one SPP away from guard, which is a really big deal on lizards. And uh, you know, loner skinks aren't the worst thing, but the the biggest weakness of this team is that it's very vulnerable to attrition. It's it's almost never going to have um, a bench. And so if you ever lose a skink or a Saurus, uh, your games become a lot harder. However, with your low TV, it's pretty likely to be able to pick up uh, Slibly in a lot of games. And going up to seven or six, seven Saurus uh, is a really big deal. It's just so much strength for people to deal with. Um, Jeff and Fugu have both gone MIA, so I'm not going to bother talking about their teams. This is what you get when you abandon. Why would you abandon? You had such good players. This is what you get when you abandon teams, abandon leagues. I will not cover your cover your division or cover your team or whatever words oops i shouldn't have backed out because we need to do predictions and by we i mean me um okay so we i'm gonna have to type this out so we have um so please excuse either typing sounds or my slowness but we've got the bad qb squad getting a bye week which is really handy for them um they kind of need one after the little brutalizing they took last week we have the respectable gents um, versus the the chaos dwarfs. Um, I'm gonna give that one to the chaos dwarfs. The uh, the chaos is pretty pretty brutalized right now. They're missing a lot of players. They're not gonna have a huge bench, and the chaos dwarfs should be able to claw mighty blow their way to victory there. I think pretty easily. Um, elements. So then we had uh, Welfs. Um and. The Vampires, ooh. That could be an interesting game. They may lose a Blitzer even to a bye week, as is tradition. Yes, fair enough. Um, this could be interesting. Um, I mean, I think the Wood Elves have it. Sorry, uh, Dire Sick Fish. I think the Wood Elves have this one. Uh, with Like, you have this guy who's amazing at hunting down Wood Elves, but... The strength is almost irrelevant against the Wood Elves. They just don't care. Like, they're not going to be based up against you ever. Um, your dirty player might be able to do a thing because uh, you've got a lot and you've got a giant bench, so you're you're pretty good at stomping on Elves' faces and just removing them. Um, and you will get, um, you know, 200k-ish TV because you're dropping down some there. Uh, 40, so 16, 20. Uh, and my stays is at 11, so he gets nothing new there. Is it 1800? So you get like 180. So you get a wizard or something, which is pretty useful. But um, I think I think I, especially seeing that six zero win last week, I think this is going to be uh, my stasis game to lose. Then we have the great cold ones versus the Hufflepuff heroes. So we have lizards uh, versus Kemri. Which uh, lizards are those? We got the great, the the. Oh wait, no, it's great cold ones. That's um um, Norse. There's just so many lizards that just default to it. Um, that is Eisen Mike's Norse versus the Camry. Let's see. A lot of guard, a lot of movement. He doesn't have a killer really, but that doesn't matter too much against Camry. Um, a lot of guard, which is going to be really useful. The dodge is going to be kind of annoying. Um, the big thing is the speed, though, right? We've got two movement eight guys, and there's only two players on this team that can even hope to keep up with that. Um, I feel like the Yeti is actually surprisingly good against the Team Guardians. The Claw Mighty Blow, if that can fire and trigger that uh, Decay, is really good for the Norse. Uh, so I think... Um, let's, let me take one more look at the Camry. Can we have good ball handling skills, certainly. 
I do. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to, uh, but it's just me. So what do you want me to do? Um, I think I'm going to give that to the Norse over the Kimri. Then we have uh, Average Race Joes and um, the Fogmire Fen Beasts. So this is a lizard off, annoyingly enough. <laughs> uh, so Fogmire Fen Beast in Rolling Red with his uh, like ridiculous Saurus all over the place, but he has one new brand. He has one brand new one. And then we have Average Race Joes, um, very very standard. Uh, lizards. This is interesting. So on the one hand, um, there are like better Saurus for uh, Rolling Red. On the other hand, Everett Rice is a solid coach. He's done really well this season. And his like, just the consistency of this team is going to be pretty amazing. And the Agi Four Skink, I think, is a pretty big deal against uh, the Fogmire Fen Beasts here. I think the Agi Skink is actually going to be pretty serious. This isn't an easy one to predict. I think it could go very easily either way. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is predict it for average rice. And uh, that is mostly because he. Is going. He's getting a. I think he's getting a bye week currently. Um. Or no, he hasn't played. He hasn't played his game yet. I keep messing that up. He hasn't played his game yet, so it's really hard to predict this one because I don't know if he's going to be more damaged or less damaged, or if he's going to have more SPP or whatever. We're just, it's hard to predict while missing that. Um. But. So uh, like if if I th and if that one goes well. So it's, and I, I predicted him to win last week, the one that hasn't occurred yet. So if he wins that and it goes well, so basing this off my previous prediction, I think he'll have an advantage going into this. But it's entirely based off my previous week's prediction, which I can't really check because it hasn't occurred yet. That is an AV ten Saurus. Um, then uh, do you want to know who's playing Doof next week? I mean, I can tell you if you really want, or or do you mean the the concert? Next week, Doof is playing Iron Master, but it might be the concert that you're talking about. <laughs> um, so then we have Rage Dorf and the Dead uh, Wrestler Society. So this is Dranar and Rage Dorf. Um, so Rage Dorf wants to win this to stay or to to jump up to first, or at least try to stay in contention for playoffs. Um, but they're playing against Drenar, who's also been doing pretty pretty well this season. Um, and it's a, it's a lizard team, which is kind of annoying for dwarfs to deal with, right? Because that's a lot of strength. And they don't really have the claw like Chaos Dwarfs do to remove that armor 9. Um, they do have a solid amount of guard, which would certainly help. But so do the lizards. And the lizards have a bunch of strength 4 and even a strength 5. Um, when dwarves are aggressively outstrengthed, it can be pretty annoying for them to even utilize their guard. Um, so while you'd think Rage Dwarf is favored in this, I think it's less straightforward than most people would imagine. The good news is these two Strength 4 pieces are going to do a massive amount of work, I think. Um, and this Troll Slayer is going to be really good with Dauntless. Like it's a two, The Dauntless is really big in this matchup because it's only a 2-plus roll. Um, to basically get your your standard one die block, sort of fake strength four. So if we consider that, and you have two strength four and two fake strength four, um, that evens up. If this was a standard dwarf team, I think I would give it to the lizards. But because he has the two strength ups, I think I want to give it to dwarfs because of that. Um, <clears throat> but I would not be surprised if that one goes either way. Uh, lizards are kind of annoying for dwarves sometimes, but uh, the way that these dwarves are built kind of uh, even out that disadvantage a little bit uh, and then we have the economy of scale versus uh, foul targets which is not getting played because the foul targets have abandoned us and we are sad so shall we move on to div 7 now that I've talked for almost an hour by myself without Shadora here hey Iron Ma uh, Adept or Iron Master what have you 
Let's try to be maybe a bit faster. Div 7. Has this one actually rolled? Um, it has not, because Kakengrad has not played. Shame on you, Kakengrad. Disappointment! Um, okay, so, what did we predict for these things? Uh, Armor Furnace for Zarkindle's Will is a bye week, obviously, as it says Edmund's Call there. So then we had Nurgle versus Norse, the Rotterhood versus Yeti to Conquer. We predict, I, uh, we both predicted Nurgle would win this, and they tied. Um, so no points for either of us there. Uh, only six points gained in the uh, week six predictions because of the ties in the games that didn't get played. Uh, Ulf um, level, or MVP is nice. He's now five away from block. Uh, injured Rotter getting MVP is kind of annoying. Uh, if he's only missed next game, that's worth keeping. Nope, he's niggled. Uh, he should be fired. Do not keep a, a a niggled decay player around. That is not worth it. Um, similar number of blocks. Looks like similar number of removals on both sides. Uh, looks just like a very even game all the way through. Uh, Rotterhood had the ball way more often than uh, the Norse did. Maybe that was a quick quick score for the Norse or something, but. It was, uh, in terms of, like, blocks and injuries and stuff, a uh, very, very even game. So I imagine it was just pretty close all the way through. Um, then we have... Yeah, no, it's not just me. Uh, other people can't stay up forever as well. <clears throat> then we have um, Scaled Measures and the Werewolf of Wall Street, where Justin predicted Lizards. Um, so he loses a point, and I gain points because i predicted that the necro would win this one 2-0 for the necro um stumbles mcfowl gooder uh picking up mvp and javon de break and john jr is picking up mvp which levels him although he is armor busted so that's a little annoying <clears throat> um Aced my way to glory, and he rolled five dub skulls. Oh, well, that might explain it as well. Um, yeah, Werewolf of Wall Street, just in control of the ball almost the whole time. Similar number of blocks, which is not amazing for the lizards, because the sort of quality of the blocks is probably better for the necro, considering uh, claw. Uh, five casualties at death and three KOs. Ouch. That would explain that. Although Werewolf of Wall Street also sustained a death, two casualties and three KOs. So, very bloody game, but... Um, if Lizards go down players, <clears throat> they are in a very bad situation against most teams. Um, uh, and even if the players are even, Saurus are worth so much more than like zombies that I would trade a zombie casualty or a zombie death for a Saurus badly hurt any day. It would help you win pretty easily. So 2-0 uh, to um, Cunning Fox up there. Then we had the Sons of Sam and the Rotting Snatches. Um, so we predicted the Nurgle to win this, and they did. So let's mark down a few more points. We both predicted that. And it is 1-0. So I imagine this was just a grind. Um, 49 to 54 blocks. Um, similar ball possession. But the Nurgle doing Nurgle things on Orc Armor and just... You know, eating through them, right? Claw will get through that. Eight KOs, five casualties versus three KOs. Uh, yeah, running snatches. Like I, I would imagine this was very much like, you know, um, either Nurgle went first and couldn't score but got some damage and then managed to turn over and just stall till turn 16, or um, they went, they, the orcs went first and the Nurgle just did enough damage. Uh, to prevent the orcs from scoring, and then on, on the Nurgle drive, they scored on turn 16, just because they were stalling out. Very typical sort of Nurgle um, score, score line here. Like, doing a ton of damage. I imagine this guy did a bunch of it with Claw Mighty Blow piling on. To, if you want to come on, you're welcome to. You just won't be um, on camera, presumably. <laughs> There we go. Hello. Hopefully I'm not like blasting out of your drums or something. No, that's fine. 
Um, yeah, I've just told Shadora to give me his like predictions later. Um, so I'll and I'm just trying to keep track of the scores for this for future reference. <clears throat> Makes sense. Then we had the Authorks, Doof, and uh, the Norse Unleashed. Um, so what did I predict there? We both predicted that um, the Orcs would win this, and they did. So points for both. Points for everyone. Um, is the Orcs won this 2-1? Yeah. Uh, this was pretty close, though, till the end. Like, there was a 1-9 chance there. Cause, yeah. Because, uh, you know, BS Dice from the Norse, they were just doing stuff down men's. And it was interesting. And looking at the blocks, you'll just see craziness happened. Orcs threw, like, about two-thirds of the blocks, but got all the removals. While the Norse threw tons of blocks, and only got a couple. Um, so it's amazing yeah. that they got this far. Eight casualties, Lots two deaths, SCP and four too. KOs sustained for the Norse. Uh, yeah, that's uh, Armor 7 not holding up. When when the Norse are amazing when their Armor 7 um, is capable of being strong Armor 7. But when it fails, uh, it fails hard. Very true statement there. And it did against the Orcs and all their mighty blow, presumably. Yeah. It's also just one of those things where... It's not even just that AV7 broke, it was just AV7 broke and stuns were nowhere to be seen. Oh. Ugh. And just I like pop pop pop. Yeah, I know I know that feeling. Uh, I played in clan against Norse the other day and as dwarves, right? And my, I was just armor 7 was holding, my armor wasn't really holding and it was just really bad for me. And then I managed to make it send it to overtime. And, uh, and then in overtime, the armor 7 eventually failed and then it just flipped on its head so fast. Norse are such a tempo -y team. You can change either way really, really quickly. For sure. Um, then we had Friendship is Massacre and Wood United, who tied. Um, we predicted the Wood Elves would win this. Um, and, well, yeah, they tied. Quite a so surprise. no points either way. But uh, uh, let's let's just look at that dead MVP right there. Oh, no, he Ooh. died. Leaf Blower died. Yeah. Not well, all... he's back to unlife. Yeah. So it's okay. Not not well not only did I like how Hydrogen the zombie who is a zombie from of my stasis my stasis wood team. elf team who's in a different division now, right? <laughs> yeah, isn't Hydrogen also a word answer? Uh that's two word answer trophies though, man. Like that's I think crazy. So. <laughs> uh but that's a really good word answer who is now dead. And on top of that, he leveled this game from an MVP, which is really unfortunate. Um I I wonder if the injuries will tell the story here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That explains the game, I would say. Um You know, only three kills in there. And eight casualties. Seven KOs. Yeah, it's just a little crazy there. <laughs> he never even played uh my stasis team. He got hydrogen from a rotter, and that that was the from my <laughs> stasis team. I love I love how that happens. You like it's such yeah. a uh distinct naming scheme that you just sort of see them all over the place and you know exactly where they came from i love it um but yeah wood elves you know trying to do the wood elf thing where they score m more often uh they score a bunch before they lose players uh and undead trying to do the thing where they make you lose players and it looks like the wood elves lost players before they could score enough well i mean they did score two and so i just assume that's kind of they got early scores mm -hmm. and they ended bounced out later in the game because the wood elves weren't there anymore yeah, it's pretty easy to score when your opponent doesn't have players. Um, yeah, it's the undead had the ball most of the game. Wood elves barely had it, so like two, a couple quick scores from uh, the wood elves, um, or or very much. It could have also been um, you know quick score from a wood elf, long score from an undead, quick score from a wood elf, uh, long score from an undead without any elves in the way anymore. Is another thing that could have occurred. Uh, they yeah. scored two in the sure. first half, and then Morley scored two in the second. So yeah, it was. He scored, he, he came back, like you said, uh, he came back once uh, there weren't any elves to stop him anymore. Yeah. We yeah. got a nice little white level out of that, and that's about it. Um, Mesozoic Mighty Men and Crudeds at Deco Experience are currently playing, so I can't tell you what's going on there, but we have a lot to talk about before we get into that. So uh, we just say go humans, right? <clears throat> um, yeah, I guess so. So if we look at the leaderboard, I mean, what did I predict? I predicted um, that, the, that Cake would win that, so go Cake. Yeah. Um, if we look at the leaderboard currently, we've got Tommy Too Tall with the Nurgle um, in a commanding He's lead. He's locked in. He is locked in. He is in the playoffs yeah. um, with 29 points. Uh, Cake could overtake him technically, but I don't think he can drop out of second. 
Because if Cake wins this game, yeah. he'll be at 28. Uh, and then if uh, Tommy Tutal loses next week and Cake wins, Cake can flip over, but nobody else can catch up to the uh, the 29 points. So he's guaranteed to make it, whether it's first or second, is up in the air still. Um, Cake at 25. If he wins this game, he's basically untouchable, I think. Uh, yeah, if Cake wins this game, it's gonna lock yeah. it's gonna lock in the two playoff spots as Cake and Tommy Tutal. Um, if Cake loses, then Galactic uh, is in range, and so is Archangel and you. But Cake needs uh, to I, lose. I don't think I'm gonna be making it. Oh, Just Archangel so has a watch. Archangel has a buy this week, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah, Archangel has a buy. So Archangel's actually at 25 already. Um, so yeah. no, I don't think you can make it. Cake needs to draw or lose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even if he does lose, then it's uh, Cake Archangel at twenty five. Um, mm -hmm. And then if either one of them even draws the week afterwards, then it's one of those spots. But so our, our playoff spots are very likely going to go to some combination of Cake, Tommy, Too Tall, and Archangel, depending on how the next uh, two games go. But there are. Uh, this was really close for a long time, right? Um, Galactic, Iron Master, uh, Lord Teton, um, all yeah, I would say very week high. Six, like everyone was, like right next to each other. I was near the top, and then until about like week eleven. Week eleven, we finally saw the spread come out. Yeah, it was it was a very tight division for a really long time, and even now at the end, there's a lot of teams that are are very similar in points, right? If if this was. Uh, you know, Div 1, and there were four playoff spots available, this would be still incredibly tight going into Week 13. But there are only two, so that reduces options a little bit. <clears throat> um, so do you want to... Let's look at some teams. Doof and the Authorks. Um, my opponent for this week. Let's do it. Yeah, you're going to do a little scouting. Well, we have one... The Playtork has picked up some SPP, so he's almost caught up to his friends, which would certainly help a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Cormork McCarthy with the movement bust is a little annoying, but we've talked about that before. Uh, he's at least got stand firm, so he's not likely to be going anywhere fast. Pretty much just, he's already at the point you needed him. No need to make a new one. Yeah, he's he's fine. Um, it's a little annoying. You'd prefer the movement for if he does get knocked over. Um, at least the stand firm prevents him from having to waste that or potentially have to GFI to get back to where he was. So the basically the fact that he has stand firm is what makes him worth keeping, I think. Um yeah. still a little annoying to position, but eh, it's okay. Then some I would say some main things to talk about is he has two black orcs that are about to level up, one just getting block and the other just getting probably more stand firm. Yep. And I feel like once that happens, that team is so much scarier. It is because the black orcs are really lacking right now. Good for, the good news for you is that that one black they don't have no more SPP before they play you, but Bad news is uh, yeah. they play me. <laughs> yeah, bad, bad news is they play you, and there are three mighty blow. One of them being mighty blow tackle piling on pro. Oh, that doesn't scare me. I'm fine. Yeah, it's just I uh, have an EV nine Yeti now. Like, what are they gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's just armor seven. You know, if it crumples, it'll crumple to some. There's a decent amount of uh, mighty blow, and there's a lot of guard. So if you position stuff well, it might be hard for you to get blocks, and there'll there'll be frenzy traps to be aware of. Certainly, with all that guard lying around. Yeah. But no, this is honestly just a really good team here. It's a, uh, it's a good orc team. The main thing that I'm liking about it is that it has five guard. I'd say it probably needs about, you know, a couple more from those black orcs to be, like, perfect. But, you know, we're not at that point yet. Nope. And he's coming up to get in there, though. And, of course, we've got the stupid thrower who rolled Agi and validated all his life choices. Yep. <clears throat> and then uh, we got another orc team in Lord Teton and the Sons of Sam. This one... Uh, more mighty blow spammy than doofs a little less guard mm -hmm. a lot more mighty blow actually only a little more mighty blow now doof is caught up certainly well i killed bavarian ripper the first by surf so uh we we did cut one mighty blow off yep and but uh it's missing it a black guard currently game. too uh yeah so Just, that's unfortunate he built up then got a bit messed up because bavarian ripper died his uh plus strength thrower got a nickel in my game Oof. And he's just kind of been like catching black works up in the meantime. Yeah, it's definitely still a, not a bad team though. No, it's still a really good team, and there's a couple of really good players on it. Um, it's just unfortunate that he's kind of been shoved into. You have a couple of rookies that you know need to catch up, or they're going to be a little bit of a liability. It's just hard when you have uh, mm -hmm. three black orcs that have block. 
you know, the fourth one is not going to want to throw blocks very often because it's the most risky action that you're going to take on your turn. So he's always going to go last, which means that he's probably not going to get as many blocks and therefore it's harder to level him up and then he falls farther behind and blah, blah, blah. Yep, it's that orc grind of, yeah, take block first if you want to level him up, guard if you don't. Yep. So, uh, and it'll, it'll be hard to catch up that one black orc, but a yeah. little annoying, but for the players he does have are really handy. All that mighty blows makes it really good against... Uh, low armor teams and uh there is enough guard where he can contend against the high strength teams but in the more pitch control game i think i like uh so there's a it'll, it'll be a little bit harder for him yeah He's plus worked. we got to mention that he does have a nice guard lineman there mm -hmm. the guard very is very good. appreciated extra guard is good unfortunately he is mng'd but he'll come back eventually. i mean that means he's safe for next season that's true i guess uh <laughs> the like millionth lizard team i've talked about today scaled measures not an Iloc. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of stats. Did, is that, oh, no. The, we've seen these before. I was about to be like, is this another Strength 5 Saurus? But no, they're, those are old no. ones. Yeah, I think both of them. Well, yeah, Ankylosaurus Andy was bought and Yellow was bought, but yep. Andy rolled the strength up yeah. on this team. Leader blocks strength. It's so weird. <laughs> I love it, man. It's great. Uh, I think it's pretty fun. And I think, especially it's, I think like, it's fun. <laughs> I don't know if it's When great. you're not getting hit by the claw teams... It's really nice having leader on a source because, you know, 89 is going to keep it on most part. Yeah. And even when it's not, now that he's plus strength, he's actually a harder target. So yeah, it's validating his life choices, too, is what I'm saying. The biggest <laughs> the biggest strength of this team is that it's got f uh, three strength five players, which makes the pitch control game even better. And then to back that up, we've got an edgy five skink, which is like almost unnecessary. Like the edgy five doesn't even help very often. Um, but oh, it's tackle zone pickup help. Or it, throwing. That's true, but it's, no. it's don't don't throw with skinks though. I mean, I guess it, like I don't like that. It means he can throw. Doesn't mean he should. Yeah, but I mean, like when you're going for a one turn attempt and you have your your movement nine skink and you just can't get those squares, and you're like, I'd rather throw than you know throw this guy's life away. Uh, yeah. It's a two plus two plus instead of rolling a GFI or anything. That's like forty. That's like forty k for the occasional instances where you want to one turn. It's a lot. Like that skink is really expensive. Is the biggest downside to it. And yeah, I mean it's a downside, but I mean it's like fake big hand too. You just kind of go in there and you walk out. Um, there's a lot of yeah, a lot of stats in the team. There's the movement nine skink, which we just mentioned. Um, good start to a one turn. Hero definitely want to pick up. It's it's great that he picked up uh, plus movement on the one that already had catch, which is kind of kind of useful. Yeah. Um, but you See, know, he just knew, man. Sprint, sure feet, psychic. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, standard sort of stuff. There's a block on as many of them as you can. A uh, couple guard, couple mighty blow, couple tackle, couple break tackle, scattered in and about. Um, I would say that this is probably one of the best balanced like team uh, lizard teams I've seen because it has a little bit of kill. Has a good amount of break tackle to get out. Has a break tackle with tackle, you know, and then just lots of strength to throw down and mm -hmm. a bloxagor that we can't forget to mention. That's true. There's so many people have bloxagors. It's hard to uh, hard to remember them. Yeah, it's a normal skill, right? But it's yeah, it's like the Saurus. <laughs> the, the Saurus are very much what you expect, right? Like here's the four skills that lizard Sauruses want. Uh, sprinkle them on in some format and he's got basically all of them now so that's really nice like a lot of level four sauruses is it or level five sauruses i guess they're very they're very good um yeah. the first of the nurgle teams the slightly less terrifying one in galactic and the rotterhood Ooh, yeah beast is close to leveling which is cool so uh all i did was i messed up some rotters they're probably going goodbye in a bit but you know jump set died on a uh dodge <laughs> good and and I'm pretty sure that one was from uh, oh, he has Lord Eaton's team. He has penetrated Igor now. Yeah, he, he stole him. Uh, Beast you is know, about we... to level, which is nice. He's got <laughs> the two skills he, they, he already cares about in uh, Stand Firm and Guard, so you hope to get lucky and roll block or strength, I guess. Yeah. Other than that, it's like grab. Yeah, grab probably. is, is Grab, thing move, factory. Yep. Uh, although it's kind of annoying to play without a, like slightly leveled beast but i would rather have a you know it's it's a lot of bloat if you don't happen to get those good skills um mm -hmm. warriors being pretty normal uh mighty blow block to catch up a bit and it certainly worked because now he has block and he didn't before all the other ones have block and then some combination of guard mighty blow claw 
Um, Nurgle Warriors are very slow to get all the things you want, but basically it's block, Mighty Blow, Claw, Guard, Tackle, Stand Firm in some combination uh, between the four ones. Generally, I like to have two that sort of go block, Mighty Blow, Claw, and then two that kind of go block, Guard, Stand Firm. Yeah. To be honest, I feel like he just puts on two more Guard, and his Warriors are pretty much set to grab anything else they could ever want, like... Oh yeah, sure. I'll take more mighty blow, more claw, more this. But yeah, I'd like when you uh, have like five guard just between beast and warriors. It's such a good feeling. I'd like to see uh, the first one, High Lord Rot Torch, uh, go claw, and then I'd like to see uh, the Knight of Rot at the bottom go guard to get another guard. Um, but since mm-hmm. you already have the mighty blow up there, more claw is always good. A uh, bunch of rotters. There's one dirty Sorry, player yeah. one. Good. That's fine. You know, get a bunch of rotters, give one of them dirty player, fire every other rotter. <laughs> that's all you want. Um, it's pretty much he can't keep any others alive, you know? <laughs> well, that's what happens with Which rotters. Also works. You know, they're on the line, they decay, they die. They die a lot. Um, Pestigor's got a great ball carrier. The armor bust is annoying, but he's not going to get hit that much, so you certainly keep him around with agi block and plus movement. Uh, so he's going to get sure hands, or if he's lucky, dodge. Uh, mm-hmm. standard block P- Pestigore. He can go in almost any way you want him to go at this point. Uh, you could build a backup ball carrier. You could build a backup killer. You could build a weird you frenzy build, goat. Yep, you could build a frenzy goat. Was the next one I was gonna say. Um, or you could build like a a weird sort of support player with like guard if you really want to. But um, I feel like you can leave that to the warriors. Um, he still can go in any way you'd like him to. So a lot of options there. I like it. In case one of the other ones die, you just start making him that one, and then you build a new backup goat. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure he's been scared by his ball carrier, you know, passing oh yeah, sometime would be. soon. Uh, and then, you know, standard killer goat. Um, Mighty little claw block. He'll probably pick up tackle. And then a uh, um, strip, like a, a safety sort of goat with wrestle and tackle is pretty yep. really standard Nurgle stuff, but it's it's good, which is why it's standard. <laughs> Yeah, the one thing I'd like to see on this Rackle Goat is two heads next instead of strip ball. If you can get, just, uh, or if you can get dodge, I like that better. Yeah, dodge is pretty good too. I have a but, I have a Ra- Raj tackle uh, goat that I really like. Um, I would love, he'll probably get two heads next if uh, if he levels again anytime soon. Um, Archangel's will um, has a. By this week yes uh, yeah he's gonna be happy for that look at this just yep. two dancers out and he gets a buy i remember that i was talking about this last week i was like oh man that's gonna be really rough like playing his next game without any war dancers and then he gets a buy and they both come back <laughs> yeah it's just like oh yeah you had to deal with it yeah those oh are... by the way we got the best uh lineman with guard here you gotta go check out those injuries he is the new terry tenant is he is he double oh my god he has no knees it's the knees <laughs> He has no knees. That's the ar- armor seven double niggled. Oh god. I, uh, no, <laughs> like he's yeah, he's guard and dodge. Like guard is super good on wood elves, but like double niggled. That's just like you're going to be basing people with him because he has guard and he's armor seven double niggled. I don't I don't know if you can keep him anymore. He's such a liability uh, now. I just want to see him kept for the memes and just a picture for Herring Zord. Yeah, fair enough. After that, you know, you just toss him away because he is not useful on a Wood Elf team. No. Those Ward Answers are super useful, though. Oh, I, I, I remember. <laughs> these, these are the worst Ward Answers I've ever seen. Like, in the like the scariest, awfulest way. Strip yep. Ball Tackle. Oh, yeah, that's standard. Mighty Blow. Oh, that's extra mm-hmm. annoying. Sidestep. Oh, good. And then the other one is, you know, the same, but worse. He's got Sidestep and Tackle and Mighty Blow and Piling On for some reason. Because that's what these Ward Answers need. Ugh. It's because I convinced him to do it, man. Man, these <laughs> these are these like these are the type of board answers where, if they ever are on the floor for any reason, I don't care. Like I don't I don't care if you're fouling with like an ogre or somebody valuable. You foul them. You, like, if they're stunned, you foul them. You need those board answers gone, or you're going to lose games. I mean, I tried killing him my darndest. <clears> they they just hate stay on. I don't know how. I I did talk about the niggled niggled lino, and I said that it's it's really bad. You can't keep that. Unless you want to keep it for memes. Uh, but for, for winning games, yes, guard is important. But marking up players is what guard is going to do. And then you're marking up players with armor 7 double niggle, which means he's dead. <laughs> like, that guy, he needs to be turned into glue. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Unless you really care about the memes. And then, yeah, there's a lot of other standard things here. Um, all these catchers getting blocked first next to sidestep unless you roll any kind of cool uh, stats or whatever. Um, yeah, to be honest, I was going to say I don't like the three block spam. I like, like I get why you do it, but I like a wrestle in there. Yeah, I was going to say I like two. Um, but he's got a wrestle. He's, he doesn't really need the wrestle because he's got the strip ball word answer, and then he's got a wrestle lineman that can do that job as well. Um, it's essentially the same as doing it on a catcher, except uh, he's just one movement less. Um, lodge catchers, they're they are pretty squishy, you know, uh, strength two means it's very easy to block them. So having blodge on all of them is going to keep them alive a lot longer, which is super nice. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then and this is where you hope for like doubles for guard somewhere in there. Yep. Doubles for guard or plus movement. And if not, uh, we can take. Sure. Or he gets nerves of steel again. Yep. Um, guard, nerves of steel if you get doubles, sure feet, sidestep if you don't, plus movement if you can get a hold of it, or agi. Um, yeah, so these two word answers are, like, are ridiculous. Like, they are this team so hard. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's, it's absolutely insane. It literally is the team. Like, you could play this You could play this Wood Elf team with those two word answers and nine linemen and win. Like, it's, it's <laughs> stupid. Well, you want to talk about your team? Yep, we're, we're going to talk about Yeti to Conquer. Why, why did you take an armor, Yeti? Because it's so great. You know what? Armor 9... Great, especially when I went into a claw matchup with it. Yeah. And the claw did nothing anyway. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it's a pretty fun thing there. Where I was like, you know what? If I'm going to get him guard eventually, and I know it. So he's going to be based up against stuff. So I might as well try taking up plus AV. Sure, it's going to slow me down a bit, but I still have two guard old runners. One's niggled, so you know, he's not going to be long for this world. Yeah, that's And then just. That's by the way, that, that Wood Elf team is 1,200 TV without those ward answers. Um, with those yeah. ward answers, it is... Um, like 1,800. Um, 1,670, I think. Yeah, 1,670. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. But yeah, for my team, just thrower kind of is just there. I like him just for the strength four and tackle and sure yeah. hands. He doesn't actually score. I don't score with them. No, I wouldn't either. It's always the uh, old foreigners if I can, or my runner sometimes. Sure, sure hands. And just anyone that's close. Sure hands is reliable. Uh, leader is some cheaper uh, reroll. The strength plus blodge plus tackle is super useful. Um, and then you just you know hand off to whoever you can give it to to uh, yeah to get them to score. Lately, with. it's been my second zerker. Yeah, well, he, which he needs it. Gotten, yeah. You know, we we had the last one eat up about like four touchdowns get immediately demolished by the Wood Elves. Had to scrap him, restart, because of a minus movement. And now we got Alexander the Greaterer. Greaterer. He's, yeah, yeah, he's 3 three SPP from um, getting something nice. From, yeah, Probably my, my, my last Eddie BS uh, touchdown against Galactic. It, it was a thing. But yeah, he's getting Mighty Blow, pile on, mm -hmm. tackle. Probably have to recycle again, because that's how Norse Berserkers work. You get one good one, the other one dies a lot. So if you can get uh, one touchdown on him in your next game, then if you do happen to win and go to playoffs, you'll be in a, a good spot with the two Berserkers that are capable of doing things. Yeah. And then a couple like want... utility linemen, you know, standard. One has dirty player. You know, you got one with uh, strip ball and wrestle. You got one with tackle. I mean, next one who levels might get kick or something. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I started the season off with floaty linemen, and then I trimmed one myself. Then, you know, I had penetrated Igor die, which was my plus strength frenzier. So I lost that fun piece and lost a dirty player. So now I'm really trim on linemen. It's oh, actually good. quite a trim team, believe it's it or nice. not. It's nice. Their linemen are cheap and they're good, right? Mm -hmm. Like block, six six three three block is great for 50k. The seven, the armor 7 is, the, you know, the downside, but the, the block mm -hmm. makes up for that quite a bit in a lot of cases. And they're just cheap, right? 50k is nothing. Yeah. Um. So I've just been on a spending spree and I ran out of money. <laughs> and then we have a, a necro team in Cunning Fox Pups Werewolf of Wall Street. They still have they he still has the uh, ng2 wolf around he hasn't managed to die yet which is a yeah. little surprising to me uh consider you know the reason it, why he kept it i mean it's good it's my mighty blow tackle dauntless it's because he keeps wanting to recycle it but things die like yeah. uh we have brick wall mcmore in the way now yeah replacing a block guard uh flesh golem which really big bummer 
Yeah, if, if other stuff dies, you can't replace uh, the the werewolf. It's it's just I like I'm really expecting that wolf to die rather than get cycled because if you ever fail a frenzy, since you're required to follow up, you're not really gonna be able to dodge out with Agi two, and then he's just gonna get punched, and then he's gonna get hurt and stepped on, and like it's it's much harder to keep him safe. I'm surprised he's managed to keep him alive through the last like four or five games more than anything else. I mean, it's more just a if when he dies, he dies. Yeah. He does have regen. Badly hurts do happen. So yeah. he is he is mostly going to just die he's lucking in it. He's a lot more exposed to retaliation than your normal werewolf because of that. Um yeah, unfortunately we had to cycle a fresh uh, flesh golem, paying the flesh golem tax. Uh but the other one yeah. is block guard. So we do have some good news here in a new agility ghoul. Yeah. It's a really so. good start. Um yeah, he started the season off with a movement nine ghoul and a blodge guard niggled one. And now just he cut a lot of TV there and now just has one agi one. Yeah, the ad the agi cool. one is super nice. You got a lot of options opened up uh with that. And you 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 feel a lot more comfortable in scoring, you know, even if your opponents get a bunch in the way. Agi four dodge can pull off some silly things if you really have to dodge to a couple tackle zones at the end to get that Possibly that touchdown that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise makes a big difference. Um, you know, we get sure hands and block, and uh, you get yourself a great ball carrier. And then a bunch of zombies. There's helium. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, Mistace's team is everywhere, man. I love it. And then uh, <laughs> he's got dirty player. I mean, that's what you want. Zombies, they're fodder. They get dirty player. Some of them get block, and then they die. Or you fire them. <laughs> zombies. Uh... And then the grosser Nurgle team in TV 2000, uh, Tommy Too Tall. With 60k bank blue. Uh, that's true, so it is 1940. Um, Beast of Nurgle in a similar position, but less less close to level. Guard stand firm. Very standard beast things. Less developed warriors. Um, the We've talked about the diving tackle one to death. I don't really like it, um, but eh, if it works, it works. I mean, he, he's lost two warriors this season. Yep. Which is something you gotta realize here. And oh, I, he had I a tail one that was like block, you know, stand firm tail. And then he was like, man, why'd you have to kill that? And then he made that and he's like, it's okay now. <laughs> I think and it's, now it's, it's back it's, on the train. It's so, it's weird. I don't know. Like, it's Nurgle really want to be on their feet. He's only movement four, putting your strength like pillars on the floor uh, and then, you know, reducing their movement a lot on purpose is. Uh, kind of rough in most cases like it's a like diving tackle is a really good skill and i'm certain he's gotten a lot of use out of it in the cases where it did matter it was great but like in general like that's not what nargo warriors are for and it can be hard like it's 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 a lot of wasted tv against bash sort of matchups because you're just never going to use it mm -hmm. um but the broken bullet tooth tony is amazing mighty blow claw Strength block, uh, you can get tentacles, and then you just keep people stuck up against your Mighty Blow Claw Strength 5 guy and watch them die and scream in horror. Oh, man. Honestly, I think Stand Firm's probably a bit better than tentacles there. Uh, I don't know. If he had guard, um, Stand Firm would certainly be better. But I, I really like tentacles on that because people are going to want to get away from that Claw Mighty Blow, and they just won't be able to. Strength 5 tentacles is, is, is really significantly better than Strength 4 tentacles. Like you just you wouldn't take tentacles on a regular Nurgle warrior, but if they take if they get strength five, you take it. Um, I get you. And then the Pestigors, uh, we've got they're slightly more tall than uh, the other ones we saw, so we've got a similar ball carrier. Yeah. This one is not armor busted, but it is niggled. It's like the same problem, but a yeah. different way. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Just don't get them. Just don't let them get hit, uh, and they'll be fine. But um, yeah, if they got regen. They'll be great. Yeah, regen Nothing is fake. Goes wrong. <laughs> uh yeah mighty blow edgy the tackle is weird but we've talked about that he needed it for his next matchup because he had none uh so that's where that came from it's still his only one too yep it's quite surprising the movement bust to, to make up for the plus movement pestigore if a movement busted pestigore um this one has kind of gone into a weird um support piece like i was talking about before um he mm -hmm. initially probably could have been a good ball carrier with uh blodge but then the movement bust is really bad so he just sort of switched it over into a support piece. He doesn't need to move as much if he's guard, stand firm, when like marking up players and that sort of thing. If I remember, I think I asked him about it, and I was like, "Hey, how come like you have a blodge guard here instead of like a sure hands? Like, shouldn't you have gotten that when you had movement six? And he's like, "Yeah, he was a uh, movement busted at blodge, 
and he just had his best score roll Agi, if I remember right. Yeah, that's that's exactly why you would do that. So it was the major transition. Like, yep, that's what he is now. Yeah, Watch exactly. Yard. And oh, that's what I. It's too. honestly a great piece. Like, oh, that's what I'd do too. If uh, if my guy that I hadn't dedicated to being a ball carrier yet, but could be a ball carrier, got movement busted, I'd be like, well, now you're an annoying support piece. Um, that's yeah. the good thing about Pestagoras is you. As long as you take like generic skills first, like block or mighty blow or whatever, you can kind of build them to be whatever at some point mm. if, if you need to replace key pieces. Um, and then we've got a killer Pestigore and a like sacker sort of Pestigore who's going to get tackle next, I would imagine, and then strip ball probably. Um, or two heads. And yeah. gangrene, gangrene storage. And then a couple rotters, uh, one with dirty I player. I think we need we probably another two rotter. more rotters and yeah, fill this roster up. We need at least one. Um, you don't really want your dirty player on the line if you don't have to. Um, and you'd like to have... So you, you want at least three that you can have on defense. Um, you have enough positionals that you only need to field two on offense. And then you just have the dirty player in one rando. Uh, but I'd like to have another one. And it also on, this gives This is you where we say embrace the bloat. I mean, you're already ahead. You might as well. <clears throat> I mean, I'm all for it. I have a bunch of rotters. Uh, another Norse team, Hirota Sukara. That's a lot of yeah. red crosses. Yeah, this is the diminished Norse team, we like to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Poor Mes guy, he's eaten so many perms. MNG'd Ulf. MNG'd Berserker. Uh, niggled Lineman. Niggled Lineman. Movement Busted Lineman. Armor Busted Runner. Ouch. Yeah, this is what you traditionally think of a blown up Norse team. And I know. Hiroto's like, you know, these guys really aren't worth holding on to, and he's probably dumping them on the market soon. Uh, yeah, he I was don't, thinking of making the comeback, no. but then it blew up again. Like, there are good players. Um, like, the Agi 4 Berserker is really nice. The, like, ball-carrying lineman is really nice. But the fact that... The like, old is super nice. Yeah, exactly. But the fact that so many of the players have injuries... And he's already, he doesn't have a bench to make up for that. Like, he is one bad game away from this team not existing. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, there's just... He could, with three or four niggles uh, and armor seven, if he goes up against a bash team and has, like, a bad game, he could be down to, like, four players for his game after that. And that's just a scary prospect to face going into a new season. So it's it's up to him. But, I mean, if this was me, I feel like I would probably reroll it. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things where... You're already so behind, and now you're only going to hit, like, killier and killier teams. Yep. Or, like, this team probably would get held back with the division, you know? You could, and, uh, and then you could throw your You would still hit somebody market. blow, you know? Some, somebody would buy that Berserker for sure. Somebody would buy that Ulf. Somebody would probably even buy that Lineman, honestly, even though he's niggled. He's good, good enough that if you didn't have too many other weaknesses and you didn't have a dedicated ball carrier, you'd consider him. Um... Honestly, the players that would easily get bought is the Ulfurner and the Mighty Blow Zerker. Yep. Those two, gone in heartbeats. And then, I, I'm figuring the Agi Guard Berserker would find a home eventually. Yep. And, uh, and yeah. the rest is, if you're fine with perms, go for it. Yep. A uh, bunch of linemen, standard. Th One of them is Dauntless, which is kind of interesting as a first skill. Surprising to me. There, there's a lot of Lizards and Nurgle and stuff, man. So That's true, I guess. It's really worthwhile having it, especially like on Orcs, too. Um, then a couple of tackle, uh, then the standard utility lineman in uh, Dirty Player Kick. Uh, you you kick with them, and then you kick somebody with them, and then he gets sent off, and then that's fine, because you've already done his job. Pretty much. And then a runner who can do runner things. He's got guard. He's a mobile guard support piece, but the fact that he's armor 6 is really scary, because he's going to get punched after he's done guarding things, and Lodge only goes so far sometimes. But, yeah. Sure. So there, there are, it, like we said, there are a lot of good players, but it's it's one bad game away from not existing anymore, which is just a scary thing. Like, if you're willing to take that risk, all the more power to you, and I support you. Uh, but I don't know if I'd be willing to take that risk. Um, and then we have Luke and Wood United, because slow is not a thing. Wow. Um, I'm sorry. Let, let me uh, get to Luke. Oh, yeah, there, there's a surprising lack of stuff there. He yeah. has at least 300k. That's true. You can yeah. buy a bunch of stuff. Um, you can. He has some money. You can buy another word answer, and you can buy a tree, and then, uh, I mean, you have two word answers, two catchers, a tree, and, and a bunch of rookie linemen, which is that's all you really need as a wood elf team, honestly. Um, 
The downside is the the one word answer you have isn't like the super sort of strip ball word answer, but he is a, he is a good blitzing word answer with tackle and sidestep. But it's not like the absolute nonsense word answer that you might want against some teams. Um, the good news is you got an AG five uh, wrestle lineman who can do similar things with uh, dodging in with AG five, as long as your opponents yeah. leave you an opening. And that's yeah, honestly, this is the buy back your team or wait for the market, which 300k, I think we're waiting for the market. Yeah, it seems reasonable to me. It's only one more game. You can just sort of pretend that you can, you can sacrifice your last game and then uh, pick up some really good players in the market because you've still got some good, uh, some good, some good bases here. Like that catcher is very close to being a one turner, which is uh, really terrifying. Movement is really good. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, and then just the wrestle dodge lineman is a nice piece to have as well, but. I think what we're going to see from Luke here is, yeah, either buying a couple more players or uh, market shenanigans. <clears throat> um, Crawdad's Zydeco Experience is playing currently. Rock Lobstrosity, they are humans. Um, no, not not anything particularly exciting on this human team. Um, guard Block Ogre is very nice, uh, but, you know, kind of what you want. He is only two SPP away from leveling. Um, mm -hmm. and then we can get some, some stand firm or grab or something. Break tackle, really, maybe. this is just a uh, jack of all trades human team, I would say. That's what humans do, yeah. We've got a like, he really went heavy into it with just every blitzer does a certain thing. Oh, he Luke and has a buy has... in his last game, so you don't need to buy players at all. Just uh, ah. keep, keep the, the the one thing you might do is buy a war dancer so it has the chance of getting MVP. Well, but it depends. I'm figuring he's gonna buy one on the market. I, I don't know if there yeah. are any on the market, is the thing. You're taking that that risk, I guess, is that if nobody puts a good one up on the market, you don't get to buy one. Um, and then you're going... In, but then you're all you're really doing is going into a, a new game with a rookie ward answer versus a chance at a 5 SPP ward answer. So at worst, it's like one extra game that you play at a level one, even if you don't buy one. So yeah, no, I think I agree with it. Mm -hmm. Just just don't... Uh, I, w I wouldn't buy anything and buy a bunch of good stuff off the market. Yeah. Just, um, you get your market stuff, then you just buy the rest of your team that you want, and have fun with some loners. Uh, I hope you don't have 12 deaths in 22 games in your next season. Uh, although I understand. my first, I had six deaths in the first six games of my season this season, and uh, I played Nurgle, which is, you know, they're slightly hardier than Wood Elves. <laughs> um, but we get some some. It's very jack of all trades humans, like you said. We've got the the support blitzer with guard stand firm. We've got the killer blitzer, like with uh, tackle, mighty blow, and piling on. We've got the frenzying blitzer with movement and frenzy, like or the surfing blitzer. And then we've got sort of a hybrid support um, slash extra tackle piece with the the guard tackle. Um, he, he's basically going for the holy three for any blitzer. Yep. You know, mighty blow, guard, and tackle. And then. Um, the thrower is more of a is being built as a runner, not a thrower with uh, blodge, um, which is fine because it turns out even with players called throwers and catchers, they're not amazing at doing it with uh, Agi three. Yeah, they're okay. He still has it open with uh, the diving catch one. Yep, it's plus but... one from an accurate pass, but the the passing is now the hard part because we don't have uh, accurate, accurate or Agi on uh, the thrower, but it opens up the ability to do it, and even if. Um, as long as we make short passes, like uh, three plus to four plus passes, um, then you have a pretty good chance of still getting a an inaccurate pass, and then diving catch lets you sort of make up for that a little bit. So that's uh, mm -hmm. that's still that's still available. It's it's kind of like being a better passer. It's you know you, you get to do the standard human thing where if you're playing against a really slow team, you can pass. Your passing isn't going to be great, but since the team you're playing against is really slow, it should be pretty hard for them to. Uh, you know, counter your even short passing game. And then we got sort of the fake blitzer lineman in the block guard. So he's really nice to have around. An extra guard piece is always good for those bash matchups. And then you now a bunch of rookie linemen. I'd probably fire that movement five guy. I mean, you keep him for the bench because 60k is pretty much his, yeah. you know, save for a rainy day. Once he gets more winnings and like, if you can bust back down to 60k and buy a new lineman, yeah, go for it. But I mean... It, this is basically like in case the blitzer. Yeah, I guess. Um, but I would very strongly look to uh, removing him, and he would probably just sit on the bench because I would be worried about him getting stealing SPP from other players. It's like you 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 are going to recycle him at some point, 
And you really don't want him to gain levels before you fire him. Well, no, I'd be <clears> putting him on my like defensive LOS all day. Oh, yeah, but on offense, he would just sit on the, yeah. on the bench. Um, and then Cake, who is currently playing him in the Mesozoic Mighty Men. We got some uh, some lizards. The Croxigor is out, which is kind of annoying for the game he's playing currently, because he's not going to have anything to counter that ogre. Uh, but it's a standard Crox, guard stand firm. Then, well, I mean, uh, it turns out Lizardmen are still pretty good, even without one of them. So much strength. Um, and speaking of, like, standard li lizard levels sprinkled all over the place, there is block guard, block break tackle, tackle, strength block, block guard, block mighty blow, tackle block. It's like all of the, like, various mm -hmm. lizard lizard things put in the salt shaker and shaken all over the Saurus. Pretty much, just all he's missing is, like, the true killer experience where you get... Yep. Block, mighty blow, tackle, break, tackle. He's uh, don't, he's not don't, very don't far away from I said this, but you put pile on your Saurus sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Shadora hates that, but he he also plays them. He doesn't try to play removal based lizards. He plays very heavily on the like I'm stronger than you, and I will bully you around, and I will make it hard for you to go forward, and I don't really care if you lose players or not. Game, in which case, piling on just opens up fouls and holes in your defensive line and stuff so it doesn't work for his play style but it can work for your your play style if you play lizards in that way um but yeah it's it's you know you take block pretty much first unless you really need something like tackle or plus strength and then you know some get guards some get break tackle some get tackle some get mighty blow it's a perfect example of that and then uh zero skink levels except for your crazy ridiculous skink who's worth keeping because he keeps getting doubles um like very standard yeah. lizard stuff yeah it's just it's so trim on the skinks. That is exactly what you'd want. Yep. Like, even with, like, a couple bench, like, it's like, going to be one bench in this next game, but, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have them because they're, like, 60k a pop, and they'll die. So you'll go down to a 12-man roster a lot. Yep. So I, I like it. No, I like it a lot, too. It's what you want. I mean, skinks are, like, you level them twice and hope for something good, and if you don't get it, you fire them. Um, and... He got something good on his first, second, and third levels on Velociraptor Vinny, so he's super worth keeping around. I mean, you'd like to get if if you don't get um, Agi, you take like Sprint and Sure Feet, I guess. If you only get if uh, if you get uh, Normals, but yeah, I'd say the same thing. Nice. But Sure Feet first, Sure Feet always first. <laughs> oh yeah, um, the only th yeah yeah he already has Sidestep, so the one turning is you don't need to rush the Sprint part of it because you already have Sidestep for the. Uh, to help with pushes but it's also because like he's sure hand so you know it's not it's not catch skink no is what i'm saying that's the big issue there so he's just gonna be running up and handing off to a different skink i feel uh for the most part um it depends like i'd have to work out the numbers there but it turns out um have having to use less pushes makes a really big deal because you're or a really big difference because you're you have to roll less uh blocks where you're required to get pushes and also if you happen to go down players um it can make it impossible if you don't have enough uh or like it takes like 11 players with to get a one turn with movement six without any frenzy kind of thing right so if you ever lose one player you can't do it anymore period um so having the movement nine option and the sprint option and stuff to reduce the number of pushes makes a pretty uh a significant difference if you need to do that i just always viewed it as you're gonna be risking your big uh player there on your one turn instead of just you know making him your general ball carrier and sending out your normal skinks oh he can do both is what my point is yeah then that's a fair point <laughs> um he's generally going to be your ball carrier um but you have the, a pretty good one turn option if you want to if you need to use it <clears throat> all on the same skink right so you're saving you know 100 ktv by not having two skinks for it um and then we have the last team here uh friendship is massacre captain bubsy morally um had a killer game last time yeah he kind Literally. of he kind of abandoned this team i think he was like well i'm not gonna do that well uh maybe we'll reroll my team is dying a little bit and then he had a couple really good games in a row so <laughs> worked out for him um mm -hmm. one mummy is is really nice with guard block but we've talked about that before um unfortunately the movement mummy died uh but there's a new one he'll get there eventually um Yep. two whites one guard mighty blow one mighty blow the only thing you're really missing there is tackle um i would have considered i'd consider i would have considered tackle over the mighty blow on the second one depending on what order that occurred in you do need guard and if you only have one on a mummy you want it on a white somewhere 
Uh, yeah. But, yeah, this, this is just a team where it's like, nah, tackle isn't needed. Like, that's for chumps. Yeah, you, he, he, he needs tackle somewhere, and it's basically always going to be on a white. At least they're only, yeah. both of them are only 6 SPP away from leveling, so either one could get tackled pretty pretty quickly, which yeah. would be nice. Um, Granted, that's if the team continues, because I'm pretty true. sure he's still just like, yeah, I'm kind of where I was at like last season, if I'm looking at this team, you know? The only thing that's really good about it is just that ghoul. Ghoul's niggled. At least he's safe for next season. You know. Yeah. <laughs> because he's safe for next season. And uh, so you're probably going to carry on one of those whites and uh, or the other. Well, you could just carry on one of the whites and see if you could level them, which would be nice. Um, but you also have the uh, ro uh, the Raj ghoul for... Um, or the rookie one at the bottom. Yep. I mean, I would try to carry on the whites to see if you could level them, honestly. Uh, is they, you're not going to make playoffs, so... And they're pretty close, so see if we can get some more SPP on uh, those two guys. Um, we've yeah. got a ghoul who's on his way to being like the sacker. Um, Spike them, my favorite skeleton ever, is still around. And uh, he is just not leveling up ever. He it's doesn't. Crazy. He doesn't need to. He's just dirty player. That's all you want. No, it is all you want. But I'm like, how is he not leveled? Like, oh, I've had so many 15 out of you know 16 players with dirty player that are like oh yeah i'll eat one more mvp or i'll get a random kaz when you do that block <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it, rookie ghoul fun. and uh some zombies one has block one has kick uh pretty standard things for zombies you don't want to give them too much kick and block are all really you'll ever see on them dirty player sometimes but we have the skeleton for that mm -hmm. and uh so those are the teams um and then we have i'm um, um you don't have to make predictions but you're welcome to weigh in if you want i'm gonna have to uh type some things down while we do this um so wood okay. united versus armor furnace is a buy so we don't need to worry about that um then we have the humans versus uh the norse unleashed so humans versus hiroto sukara um i'm going with the humans just because Hiroto yeah. is just in such a bad pickle right now. He is, and the oh, humans team. have enough mighty blow and guard that they'll be able to take advantage of the fact that the um, the Norse are a little beaten up with all those niggles and mm. stuff. The humans have the have uh, the means to do that. Um, the caveat being, assuming they don't all die to cake right now, because we don't know what's yeah, happening in that know. game. <laughs> um, then it's we have okay. he, he lived through me in seventy blocks. He'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, probably. Then we have the yeah. lizards, and we have uh, the Nurgle. It's the big yeah. number one versus number two right now. Um, and I am calling Rotting Snatches. Yeah, it, it matters a lot for Cake. It doesn't matter really for um, Tommy Too Tall, because no matter what happens, he's still in at least second. Um, All he's worrying about is seeding, so he only needs a yeah. tire better. Yeah, so he'd like so he'd he'd like one. to win, and he probably will try to win. But he, it's not a critical match for him, and it is a very critical match for Cake. Cake, if Cake wins this, and then he wins that, uh, he's basically he's guaranteed to go. Um, but since Cake has Archangel um, dead tied with him, this uh, right now, this the game that Cake is playing now and uh, next week are very important for uh, him and his uh, playoff chances. But um, I think I want to go with. Nurgle as well, having just played a Nurgle versus Lizard match with a worse Nurgle team than this one against what I would arguably say is a better Lizard team. Um, I think I think the Nurgle can take this. Um, it turns out Claw is kind of good against Lizards in a lot of situations. Yeah, especially but, when you got a strength 5 Claw player. Ooh. Yep, and uh, he's also seems to know what he's doing considering he's 9-2-1 this season, so it's hard to vote against uh, Tommy Too Tall. Yep. Then we have um, Undead versus Necro in a match of death. I want to call this for the Necro. Because you know what? L let's have some fun with it, you know? I think the Necro Oops. have uh, Did not Captain mean Bubsy's number. Did not mean Mostly because he's down his awesome ghoul. And, you know, we're going to see the questionable werewolf just do things no one would believe. <laughs> yeah, that's... I the Dauntless is actually surprisingly useful too, um, that he has. Um, in this case. Uh Morley does get uh inducements, surprisingly. Like a decent amount of inducements. It's like three hundred K. Man, that he he might just go and get uh Luther again. <laughs> <laughs> um Or uh is it Ramtut? Is that the uh big guy for undead teams 
Um, that's actually, I have no idea. Um, I'm going to need to look that up because I would like to. Let me find out. Undead. He's usually a good pick. Yeah, they get Luther, um, who is nice. Uh, there's the stupid, like, human with catch, diving catch, like, like ear lice or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. They do get, they also have Ramtad as an option, but he's like 380k, so I don't think Morley will be able oh, to pick him up. He's a lot more than I thought he was. He's also strength <laughs> six. <laughs> yeah, Ram, Ram Tackle and wrestle. Uh, that's, uh, or no, Ram, Ram Tide is strength six, uh, break tackle. Oh, yeah, he is wrestle. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, they can also get set tech, which would be a good option for him as well, I think, in strength four. Yeah. Um, block break. Oh, uh, yeah, set tech would be ball. such a good player here. Um, no, this isn't, this isn't easy. This is not an easy, um, choice, uh, honestly. Um, the lack of ball carrier is a really big deal. Um, and it depends, it's, it may be irrelevant, right? It depends on how Morley wants to play it. Um, in all honesty, both of these teams don't have a chance of making playoffs. So they may just try to play for development and do silly things they wouldn't otherwise do. Um, so there's... It, there's that element that makes it hard to predict uh, for me because you know they're not they may not you know super try hard to try and win right so yeah um, but if this was a normal season game like where they could go to playoffs and they're both try harding it I think I, I would give this to Morley I like that so we'll have a bit of a we'll, we'll have a contentious pick even though you're not really in my competition <laughs> gotcha <laughs> have to see what Shadora says um, and we have your match versus doof yeah i'm gonna call that as a win for me <laughs> you know hands down i got this <laughs> is that uh just entirely out of i want my own team to win or are you are are you really that confident uh a little bit of both i wouldn't say i can't lose the authorks but i do feel confident going in because i do have enough players to make stuff happen yep i have my ulfs back in action and i've trimmed down a lot so inducements aren't going to be a big thing. That's true. In fact, uh, he gets none. You get 10k, I think, which you know is nothing. It literally is nothing. I can't spend 10k. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have zero dollars. The only, I think the only physical way you could spend 10k is if you happen to have enough. Oh no, he, he's something. under. He's under. He has 200k in the bank right now. Oh, he you could buy a new lineman and, and then be back up to where oh, yeah. inducements so don't he's, matter. He's 1740, and so he, he gets 40k, so he probably gets a babe, basically. See, if I was doof right now, I'd like meme it up hard and only give me 40k by like tier leaders, some uh, coaching assistants, <laughs> where I literally just can't buy a babe, but I'm like, I have 40k. <laughs> just to be annoying? Yeah, I mean, he can. Yeah, just why not? Mm -hmm. You got excess cash. Yeah, this is not... I, I understand that you're very confident. I've got to predict something for me. Um, I don't think it's super straightforward. Um, like a week ago or two weeks ago, I would have said uh, you like 100% of the time over Doof, but Doof has picked up enough Mighty Blow and Guard now that there's, um, you know, there's... there. It's not going to be incredibly easy for you. There's... Uh, Certainly the chance of Mighty Blow breaking Armor 7, and there's enough guard that he can kind of cancel your your strength in a lot of ways. Right? Yeah. You do have the three strength, with, or the three strength four with uh, two ulfs and the thrower, um, but he's got four strength four, and three of those have guard, um, which makes a difference. But uh, you do have a yeti, and you've got a... The, the thrower is, is, is really nice with that strength four as well. Um, mm -hmm. Hard to say. Um, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna give it to you as well. Why? Thank you. <laughs> um, it, it's definitely not clear cut, though. No, I, 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 I wouldn't say it's clear cut. Um, I think the biggest thing, though, is that you have a, you are, you have a chance at playoffs if things go well. So you're gonna be really dedicated to trying win this game, whereas Doof can't anymore. So he may not be up to you know playing his 100 percent, or he may. He, there are things that he doesn't have to try as hard, you know, because he mm -hmm. can't make playoffs anymore. Uh, so you have more motivation to win, I guess, is what I'm trying to say there. Gotcha. <clears throat> I'll come in with, like, two players on my Norris team for playoffs. It'll be great. Perfect. That's <laughs> all you need. Inducements. 
Uh, Sons of Sam yeah. and Archangel's Will. So we've got Lord Teton and his like Mighty Blow Spam orcs. Um, they do only have one tackle, which I think is the big thing here against um, Archangel's Will. Um, the good thing for Archangel's Will is that those two war dancers are coming back because they have a bye this week, and they're they're going to so be back disgusting. for their uh, game against Teton. Um, so despite them being 200 TV down right now, they're actually going to be 200 TV up over <laughs> over Lord Teton. Um, no normally yeah. in this situation, I would say Wood Elves like a thousand percent of the time. Like Wood Elves are just kind of good against Orcs; they don't really care about your strength. Um, however, Teton does have the the strength four thrower, so strength four mm -hmm. in sure hands um, means that those War Dancer dives are not really that incentivized. Like you do have strip ball, but that doesn't matter. You have tackle; it doesn't matter. Uh, you and it's going to be uphill because the the uh, even if the um, Wood Elves can cancel out, you know, the, the cage assists, uh, which is going to be hard because there's a lot of guard, so it's going to be pretty easy to have guard on cage corners. Even if that occurs, it's still uphill because it's uh, strength 3 on strength 4. Um, so the, the the thrower himself is pretty safe. Yeah. It's going to be the point of... Kind of like my game where I had a strength 4 thrower going in with a nickel, and it's like, he could come into my cage. He couldn't hit the thrower, but he could hit everyone around for me. You really can't hit the orcs as hard. No, because so armor nine be a big determining factor. It is, yeah. So I feel like if uh, Lord Teton can get some damage going, it's gonna work out his way. And I think but he can. He doesn't I still think uh, Archangel's still favored for this. Um, the the big thing for me is that while Teton does have a whole bunch of um, mighty blow, he only has one tackle on that mighty blow. And Archangels, like, literally his entire team has dodge. I don't think there's a single... Like, there's going to be one player, two players who don't have it. Uh, and the tree. Yeah, I'll, I'll go look that up for you. Um, yeah, one tree without it, two linemen without it. Uh, and the thrower, I guess. Yeah, but that, like, all the catchers have it. All Three of the linemen have it. Both war dancers have it. Um, I think one of the main things is just there's no real bench for the wood elves. No. Or sorry, they're going to come in, yeah, just straight up 11 with money roll. So depending on that, they might get one extra. Um, the orcs will have, um, actually, they're down a player because they have a lineman who's out and they have a dead black orc. So the orcs will actually be at 1530 and the wood elves are going to be at like 16 something, 1670, I think. So the orcs do get um, 100. The orcs can have a wizard, basically, um, I think. Which, uh, yeah, that doesn't sound like a bad buy there. No, um, this is hard. This is really hard. I don't want to predict something. It's okay. I'll predict for you. I'm going to guess Archangel's will on this one. Mm. Archangel has the motivation because he needs to win this mm. to have a, a shot at playoffs. Um, I, so I think that's that's why. That's the edge I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go with. Mm. Um, if it, so, I'll I'll predict Archangel as well. Um, if this was regular season, I think I would probably predict um, Archangel. Uh, I would probably predict Sounds Teton. Sam. Yeah. Um, even with only one tackle, um, there's enough mighty blow there that you know we can get a removal or two. Um, the th and the thrower is going to be really annoying for uh, the Wood Elves to get the ball off of. Um, mm. So I would in, but so I think it's really, really close. But uh, because of the sort of motivation factor, I'll uh, I'll go with Archangel and the Wood Elves. And then lastly, we have Skilled Measures and the Rotterhood. Yeah, and that's not Nylox. Now the butt whooping I got, I, I still think this is gonna be Rotterhood. I really um, didn't lose anything in my game against them. No, once it, once again, uh, Nurgle versus Lizards. Yeah, um, Nurgle with. Two claw. I think it's and a, there's niggles and like, yeah, you know, minus armors on this team, so players can go off pretty quick. Um, I think it's less straightforward than the other Nurgle Lizard game. Like the other Nurgle Lizard game, I was like Nurgle. Um, this one, I think it's less straightforward than that. Um, and a lot of that, I think, is on the the skinks, right? Like the the Agi five is going to be really good, and kind and the movement skink is annoying for mm -hmm. the Nurgle to deal with because like even a regular skink is movement eight and the fastest player on this team is 
movement six, six. other than yeah. the, the one seven guy and there's that one guy who's movement nine uh so that that's really annoying for the neural to deal with but if they deal with it well and they can remove a couple saurus and then the skinks can't be protected anymore um it swings in nurgle's favor uh really fast if things don't go well for the lizards initially so um i think i will i'm gonna give that one uh to the nurgle but it is not as straightforward as the uh as, as the uh, the other nurgle lizard game um so i'm gonna bring myself back up to the title screen even though it's missing a player because shador isn't here um Thanks to Iron Master for joining me for the last little bit of this. Uh, Shador was in here. Oh, it was, he was a pleasure sick. being here. Yeah, it's good. It was better. It's, it saved my voice a little bit and gave me someone to talk to. Yeah, I didn't want you to go insane just yet. Not <laughs> yet. I'm getting there. Um, but that was week 13, the preview for week 13. So we have one week to go. Um, we are, it'll be probably a bit shorter than the other ones because there won't be any predictions. Um, but we will be able to um, take a look at the teams and how they've wrapped up after a division, who's going to go to playoffs, and maybe we can take a look at what team they're likely to play in the playoffs. Potentially, it, it is a, a match review week, so if there are any exciting things that definitely determined the results of the uh, of the division, perhaps we will take a look at those, because uh, although I imagine they will be streamed, we will, we will see um, how that shakes out. Uh, but until then, that's been me till next week, and... Uh, I will see you next time.